We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to building your Afford a Plane. In this part, we're going to finish our gussets. So get your bolts ready, all of those bolts and nuts, and we'll finish installing the gussets so that by the time we're done, we have a nice standalone fuselage. So let's get started. Be careful not to bend the tail gussets back there. It's best to use a second person when turning the fuselage over. Gussets down. We have turned the fuselage over. We don't need the paper template anymore. And note that I have pulled the very front nose away from the table by about 10 inches or so because that's where we're going to start with our first gusset and you're looking at it upside down not that that matters but do notice I have drawn once again center lines very accurately on both of the tubes and this is the location for gusset B remember this is a matched set to the other side and if I place that over in the same location as the bottom, I am able to see the line through all of the holes in there. Now this means I have it positioned identically to the one below. And it's nice because now we can get this drilled so that it's in the exact spot we want it and if we use the line and the holes on the first time then the second time is going to be a line directly above so using the same technique as before I'm going to mark this time not the end holes because remember the end holes are the ones we riveted on the bottom and you can look underneath to check and be sure we riveted the end holes so we want to mark the other holes, in this case the inner holes, with our marker without moving this and then we'll remove it and punch those two holes and drill them. And I'm using a 1 8 inch number 30 actually drill bit here. And always drill as straight as you can. Double check in your work. Now I can clicko this in place just to make sure my other holes are still aligned. And as I look through the other holes, they look real good as far as my marks go. So I'll go ahead and drill them also. With one hole clicked in place, you can also use the holes as an accurate guide, keeping your eye on the line through the hole. So with our two inner holes drilled, I'm going to start with this one and drill it to 3 sixteenths. Next we're going to drill our 3 sixteenths hole to the full quarter inch size. Now as we go through and after we get through we're going to slow down and if we have our drill nice and straight we're going to be able to find the 3 16 hole on the bottom and once we found it we're gonna go and drill all the way through 
Now, if you don't feel comfortable that you found the hole below, you can stop and take a look at the bottom to make sure you see the tip of the drill. So as I go down and stop, we can look at the very bottom and look for that tip. Now let me say this, if there's any doubt that you haven't found the hole below, don't keep drilling. The last thing we want is to be drilling outside of the hole on the other side. But if you do feel confident in your abilities, make sure you have found the other side. And usually you can feel by rocking the drill and then go ahead and start to drill. You can always pull out just to make double sure that you are in fact hitting that hole. And then it'll go right through. Let's take a look at how that hole turned out from the side. That's why I chose this so we can actually look in and see what our work looked like. So here's the hole we drilled. And we can see it did a very nice job of going through. So by accurately placing our center lines and our gussets in relation to the ones below, we can get very nicely drilled holes all the way through without using a drill press. It just makes things go quicker and less complicated. So what we're going to want to do is finish off the other holes, but we can at this time actually put a nut on the other end of this to actually hold it in place. Let's take a look. So what I'm going to do is take our bolt, and these bolts are AN26, AN426A. They're just the right length for this. I'm going to stick this up through the bottom. The direction doesn't matter as much as I want you to see what I'm doing here. I'm going to then put on two washers and then I'm going to put on a castle nut. Now a castle nut is not going to be used here permanently. These are the castle nuts that are going to be used elsewhere in your kit so you don't have to buy them extra but what's nice about using them is that you can use your fingers to put them on because we will be taking it off again. If you put on the nylock nuts that are going to go on here permanently, you're going to have to use a wrench and that makes no sense. So using castle nuts for now, finger tight, and that holds it just fine. So we can move on to our next hole. Now here's another technique for having successful drilling from the top to bottom. This is a 3 16 bit. This is what we use to drill through our top. And we already have a 3 16 hole on the bottom before we turn the whole structure over. And here's our final size or quarter inch that allows the bolt to go through. By using an intermediary size, in other words, this size is in between, doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere in between 3 16 and 1 quarter, and taking the extra step to drill this before the final makes it easier to find the hole in the bottom. So this is another option you can use to help you locate the hole in the bottom if you don't feel comfortable going through all in one fell swoop with the quarter inch because again we don't want to miss that hole on the bottom. So I first have my 3 16 going into the 1 8 inch hole. Okay, we have a 3 16 hole on the bottom already from before. Now I'm going to step up to the size that's not a quarter inch but halfway in between. We'll have to look up what size that is. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. And now I'm going to drill through here. And now it'll be easier to find the hole in the bottom to updrill to this size. 
And once you feel it grab, you know that you have gotten into that hole. And it goes right through. Now I can put the final size on, the quarter inch. And it will be much easier to find that hole in the bottom. And it goes right through. So it is an extra step, but that way it makes it almost impossible to miss the hole because they're so close. In fact, you can step up as many steps as you want. It just takes a little more time. Another way to do this quicker is to drill all of the holes you're going to drill with the same size. Change your bits, drill them up to the next size, and then finally the quarter inch so that you're not switching bits as often. Now we can finish the other two holes. We'll end up with four bolts and we'll continue this for every gusset on this side. And you can see that when we're done, all we have left then is to flip this over one more time and get rid of the rivets that are in these end holes. Those will come out very easily and then final drill these and fill them with bolts. Using a little mirror like the one I'm holding, if you notice, and if you can see this on camera, you can see the cross point of the drill through the hole. In other words, by looking at the mirror and adjusting the drill, you can be positive 100% that you're in the center of the hole before drilling all the way through. And our final step on this gusset is to drill the remaining holes out to 3 16 These are the ones that have rivets on the back side so that when we end up flipping the entire fuselage over we can remove the rivets and drill through to finish off with another four bolts. For those that wonder how we size bolts and how many washers to use and things like that. These uh, bolts only come in a certain number of predetermined lengths when you order them. You of course describe the diameter that you want and then the length. Now the numbering system is for a different uh, topic but what I want to show here is that when you're selecting a bolt for a given application it's important that the load-bearing parts of the structure that get involved with the bolt must reside only on the shoulder, not the threads. Let me give you an example. In this case, we're going to tie these three pieces together. We got a gusset, we got a wall of the tube on one side, wall of the tube on the other side, and another gusset. And our bolt's going to pass through and hold all of this together. Of course, the gussets want to move in various directions and the bolt's going to prevent that. So notice the shoulder, if you look real closely, the shoulder of the bolt, which is the part without the threads, is through all of the pieces. Now if any of these threads were inside this gusset, because maybe you selected a bolt that was too short, that would be no good because that means the threads would be bearing the load of your gusset here. And the threads are a weak spot in a bolt, right? They've actually cut into the shaft of the bolt and that creates a weak spot. So when sizing a bolt, the shoulder must bear all of the load, not the threads. So. What if you're, we know that we can't have a bolt too short? What if we have a bolt that's too long? Well, if we have a bolt that's too long, when we put our nut on, it won't come all the way down and grip the way we want to. And that's, of course, why we use washers. The washers are going to hide or take up 
the excess shoulder. So in this case, we need two. And with two, now we only have threads left. And when we put a nut on, the nut will come all the way down to the washer and won't bottom out, so to speak. Now, if our shoulder was real tall, we might need three or four or five washers. Well, good practices, standard practices say that if you need more than three washers, then you need to get the next longer bolt size. So three washers or less in order to make your nut and bolt connection here. And as I move to each gusset, I pull it off the table so I have access to the bottom. Not too far, we want some strength, but it's easy to move it as necessary. And also we can peek inside the tube and see the three bolts are lined up very nicely through the tube. Okay, we're finished with this one. These 3 16 holes are where the rivets are located on the other side and all the other holes have been up drilled to quarter inch with castle nuts and washers. And we're going to move on to the next. We'll shift the whole thing over because that overhang is very nice when drilling through. And to letter A, center lines drawn. And look for the holes, look for the line inside of the holes. And remember, we're leaving open all the locations that have rivets on the opposite side. And there is generally one at each end. And these holes should be drilled up to 3 16 and the rest get the bolts. And then I'm going to move on to this one. And we have this completed. These holes need to be drilled out to 3 16 and then we're headed that way. And D. And we have completed D. These are our rivet locations on the other side. So now we'll move down to the next one. Here is gusset E. And you can see the holes after I drilled them, how they line up very nicely on the line. Of course, I use the gusset as my template for drilling. And there's our E gusset finished. And we'll move downward. And we have two more in this area before going back to the tail. And to check our work, we can look through the end tube and see how our drilling is coming. And that looks nice. And one more in the middle. Now for gusset F, I have blocked up the fuselage by a little bit. That gives us some space as we're drilling for the drill bit to go down and through. And we have our one inch meeting up with our two inch. So we want to draw that very accurate line so that we can match up the other side properly. And I'm going to get up on a little bit of a step stool here so that I have an easy shot for drilling and working on this. If anyone's looking for a great tool to buy that's not too expensive and will come in very helpful throughout your project and future projects is get a hold of a digital caliper. These are only $30, $40. Uh, they're very sophisticated now and very accurate. I use them all the time for determining whether I have the right drill bit. They read in either inches, millimeters, or now they do fractions. So for example, 
pull this up there and you notice it says a quarter and it's also great for finding the halfway point on our channels because it can be extremely accurate as far as the decimal fractions of an inch or millimeters and so just in general when you're trying to determine very precise measurements uh, these are just fantastic and you get them on uh, Amazon. I'm not necessarily recommending anything in particular, but this is just the one I'm using. I tried to avoid the plastic ones. This is metal, stainless, and uh, like I say, $30, $40, something like that, even less. I have an entire tip of the week on calipers, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch how I use these when I'm building. And the caliper sure makes it easy to verify that you've got your center line. And down here at the tail, notice we've extended it off the bench. And note that when we can see those center lines through the holes we know that we have a perfect match with the other side and can confidently drill straight through and that leaves one more gusset and it needs to be positioned correctly When you have finished all of the gussets, it'll look something like this. All of these holes represent rivets on the other side that now need to be removed. So we're going to flip the entire fuselage over and remove those rivets. Now we have turned the fuselage over on the other side so we have all the bolt heads on top. So let's start at the front and take care of finishing off the drilling for our B gusset. So our first step is to remove the rivets on the top. And that's a very easy thing to do. I'm going to use a 1 8 inch drill bit because that was the size of the rivet we used. And all we have to do is drill into the center of the head of the rivet. There's a little hole there. And I'm going to go slow on my drill. And notice it pops right off. Now, there is a piece of the rivet in there. So all you have to do is take a punch. And it knocks right through. It is gone. That's all there is to it. Now we can do the same for the rest of these. That's why we used aluminum rivets because they are uh, very soft. And knocked it right out. So removing the rivets is very, very easy. What do we want to do next? Well, we have eighth inch holes. We simply want to drill them out to 3 16 and then finally up to the quarter inch. Now remember, down below we left the 3 16 hole. So once we go above 3 16 whether it's the quarter inch or the size before the quarter inch, we're going to be aiming for the hole below, just like we did over and over when we had it on the other side. And this is my final drill. And I can confirm with the bolt. Now, we do not need to put washers and nut on the bottom. In fact, we can take this out if we want. 
what we want to do is continue on the rest of these, drilling them out so that you can put a bolt into each one, but do not put washers and nuts on them at this time. Okay, I finished all the holes and they all check out just fine. All right, what we want to do now is remove the remainder of the nuts and bolts. Now, remember you got two washers and gravity is going to send them to the floor, so I got my hand cupped underneath as I turn the nut and set that aside. And that's why we went finger tight so that we could get them off easily. Occasionally you'll have a nut or a bolt with some sort of burr on the threads and you may have to use a tool to put it on or off. So we have the two gussets off. The reason we did this is now is the time that all of the holes have to be deburred. Now of course the purpose of the gussets is to hold our two tubes together nice and strong. And of course we usually think of it's the fact that the bolts going through are holding the gussets onto the tube and then onto the other tube and it works that way, which is fine. But also we must remember there is a tremendous clamping pressure between this gusset and the tube and the one on the bottom pressing together very, very hard as we crank the bolts down. And it turns out that the friction developed from the clamping pressure between the tube and the gusset supplies quite a bit of the strength to the joint. In fact, I've read where it's up to 10% of the total strength. If you think about it this way, if we didn't use bolts, but we were able to squeeze the upper and lower gussets together with the same force that we would have had if we had bolts, there would be some strength. The gussets would be doing some goodness because of the friction and the power of the clamping force. Having said that, the reason we need to deburr, and when I talk about a burr, I'm talking about a tiny ridge that is developed when you drill the holes. Now, if you used a magnifying glass, you'd be able to see a little ridge sticking up. We also get a small one from the other side too. Depending on how fast your drill bit is going, how much pressure you use, a lot of factors go into determining how bad that ridge or burr is. And the same thing on the surface of this metal too. We're puncturing the metal with our drill bit and that raises just a tiny ridge up. You can feel it with your nail. Now, why is that bad? Well, it turns out that that ridge, if you leave them on there, you don't deburr, you leave the ridge on there, then when you go back and you put the bolts in and you tighten it down to full torque, you're actually maintaining a tiny gap between the two surfaces because that burr takes up some space and if you hold the plate off of the surface by any amount, you are reducing that friction grip strength that we just talked about. It's almost like putting washers in here and then putting this down. You would have virtually no grip or friction strength between the two surfaces because the washers kept them separated, even at full torque of the bolts holding them down. So to sum it up, we want an extremely flat surface on both pieces so that when we put the bolts in and tighten it down, we get all of that surface area gripping the other surface area. So it's a matter of integrity and strength of the joint that we deburr. It's not a cosmetic thing. And so if you want full strength, you need to deburr. Deburring is very straightforward. We have a technique for removing burrs from holes, which is a little bit different than burrs from uh, other types of cuts that, that aren't circular like this. Now there's the simple way and there's the elegant way to remove, quickly remove burrs from a hole. Let's take a look at that. Here are the two tools used for deburring holes in metal products. 
This is a drill bit. I guess that's closing in on half an inch and I've wrapped some tape around it. This is a deburring tool which you can get at any aircraft supply. It basically has a countersink bit in the end of it. Let me show how to deburr using each of these tools. So if you want to go with the drill bit, and the important thing is that the size of the drill bit has to be larger than the hole by some amount. And all we have to do is put the bit into the hole, add some moderate pressure, and rotate one or two times around. That's it. Again, it's going to be hard to see on the camera, but we don't want to drill a half inch hole through the hole, but by going around once or twice, you are taking off, and you can actually see it, you're taking off the edge. And that's all it takes. You can do this as fast as you want. Both sides. Now on the other side, I will use the de deburring tool. It's just nice. The principle is the same. It has a swivel. It has a countersink tool uh, bit, countersink bit on the end, and it just makes it a little easier, a lot easier on your hand. I'm just going around once. If you go around more than once or twice, you're actually starting to countersink the hole, and you don't want to do that. There's no point in doing that on very thin sheet metal. That's actually a very dangerous thing to do. And you may see a piece of metal fly off. And that's it. We're done. Uh, do both sides. And you also then want to do both sides of both gussets, of course. And then the holes. So I'm just going to go through here. You can actually see the, the metal come off. What you're doing is taking that ridge off and you're all set and we want to do it on the underside just get on your knees and quickly do it now you are all set to reattach put the bolts through and uh, torque to a, an appropriate value of course when we put the bolts in we're going to use the nylock nuts we'll take a look at those because we're for the most part done putting the bolts in. On very few exceptions will we have to take these bolts out one more time where we have another part of the aircraft attaching. Um, and this is a nylock stop nut. It has a bit of plastic in the middle which keeps it from rotating and that's why you have to use a wrench to put it on because it's too stiff for your fingers to turn. So we should be substituting our castle nuts with these nuts and just gently snugging them up for now. Later we'll talk about torquing. But you will need your wrench to gently snug them up on our gussets. And congratulations on completing your first gusset. It's all done. On this nose piece we are going to have to remove these bolts for an insert later on so I use castle nuts just on these for now but for the most part you can use the nylock nuts so our goal is to simply repeat this now for the rest of our gussets until we complete them all and you'll be ready to say that you have made a major accomplishment in the construction of your fuselage frame. Because this is a little hard to work because it's in the middle of the table. I blocked it up with a piece of wood to get it off the table 
and I disconnected this at the far end so that I could remove it and that gives me the ability to deburr both sides. And down on the tail end, our last two gussets. We finish up this one and deburr and we are done. As pointed out earlier, some of the bolts will have to be removed for future installation of other components as we build the plane. So in gusset B here, this top row where my finger is pointing, those four will be removed. So simply use castle nuts instead of the nylock nuts on there so they're easily removable. On gusset E, this top row where my finger is pointing will also have to be removed in the future. So use castle nuts only for that top row. And notice the one hole where I don't have a bolt at all. That will use a different bolt, so just leave that blank like I have here. In gusset D, the top row will also have their bolts removed in the future, so use castle nuts for those. And also note the missing bolt. We will not place one in there at this time. And finally on G, the very bottom hole there that you see a bolt is missing, that will use a different bolt later on when we build. And for those of you following me to the very end here, please note that I made a big boo-boo, a big mistake on the formation of my G gusset. This was brought to my attention by Terry Adair, who runs the AffordaPlanesStore.com, who was watching the video and noticed that my gusset was wrong. Now count the number of bolts at the bottom there. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now take a look at the print and you will notice there's supposed to be four bolts on the right side. In other words, I didn't make the right corner at the bottom long enough. I left that off and I'm going to have to remake this gusset on both sides. Won't be a big deal, but it's a very important deal and must be corrected. And if any of you have made this mistake, it's good thing that you're watching to the very end of the videos. And there you have it. In our next part, we won't have so much repetitive type work like all those holes in the gussets. We're going to continue working on the structure of the fuselage and then we got some exciting building ahead of us. So everyone, back to building.